So I'm doing some research for my latest video, debunking the uh, quantum glass battery. Folks who get in on this breakthrough now, before it's rolled out on a mass scale, will have the chance to be a part of the single largest legal creation of wealth of the last 25 years. And I come across this video from University California, Irvine, a top 10 public university in the US seven years in a row. And my first thought is, this has to be a joke, right? What if a battery lasted forever? Could it power a car? Could it power your home? Well, yeah, we already have cars that are kind of powered by batteries. At the University of California, Irvine, we're counting on it. UCI chemistry student Mia Li Tai has developed a technology developed that could potentially a help a battery hold unlimited charges. Unlimited charges? While experimenting in the lab, she made a remarkable discovery remarkable. that will have a huge impact on huge. future energy consumption. By coating the gold nanowires in a thin gel, the filaments of the capacitor retain their properties under hundreds of thousands of charges. Call it a hunch. Call it a happy accident. We call it the power of I. The power of I. When you're given the opportunity to explore and follow your convictions, when dedication and inspiration cross paths, amazing things will happen. Amazing things will happen. Now, you might be wondering why you've not heard of this remarkable technology that's going to have a huge impact on mankind. Let's rewind that and just for a second to see where that crashes and burn. Lee Tai has developed a technology that could potentially help a battery hold unlimited charges. While experimenting in the lab, she made a remarkable discovery that will have a huge impact on future energy consumption. By coating the gold nanowires in a thin gel. Gold nanowires. You want to store energy in gold nanowires. I think I'm just about to spot a tiny flaw in why this will never become a viable technology. Actually, there are two reasons. Uh, one of them less obvious than the first. You see, one of the reasons that we went over to lithium is it's light. A atom of lithium only weighs seven atomic mass units, while one of gold weighs about 200. And they both store about the same amount of energy. And of course, it's made of gold. What if a battery lasted forever? You can't seriously be expecting to use gold. Could it power change? As a significant component of your battery. Has developed a technology that could potentially help a battery hold unlimited charges. By coating the gold nanowires in a thin gel. Like capacitively storing the energy in gold nanowires. Capacitively. One of the lowest energy density ways of storing energy. The filaments of the capacitor retain their properties under hundreds of thousands of charges. Yes, and I did thousands of experiments that showed that gold is much more corrosion resistant than paint. Here's a great idea. Why don't we make all of our car bodies out of solid gold? As well as a solid gold fiddle. Wouldn't a solid gold fiddle weigh hundreds of pounds and sound crummy? Just think how corrosion resistant they'll be. You'd never have to worry about salt corroding your car body ever again. It would be amazing. It could revolutionize the car industry. Could it power change? Okay, so this is a few years old and so the university PR department got way ahead of itself. Maybe a forgivable sin. But then I find out right next to this in their most popular upload section, the Hyperloop. What really intended to do with the Hyperloop was really to spur interest in new forms of transportation. That the public and the world want something new. We want to bring this to fruition and show people that something new and great can happen. And it doesn't have to be the same old thing. What if a battery lasted forever? And I think uh, you guys are going to bring it to them. Yeah. And just a quick reminder, Elon Musk's test track was only one kilometer long, had rust on the inside, basically because they didn't appreciate that concrete gives off water when it's laid down, and that steel rusts when it gets wet, and therefore their uh, test track 
could only get down to about 10 millibar in vacuum, not the 1 millibar that they said they would need to run the Hyperloop in. Not that it really mattered anyway, because none of the first test pods went above about 50 miles per hour. Let's remind ourselves of how awesome this new technology was. So there's this stripped down electric car that's just going to push the uh, Hyperloop pods down the tube. Now the cynical among you might say, hang on, why is this being pushed up to speed by an electric car? I mean, doesn't that just mean that the electric car, if it had just entered on its own, would have won the competition? Well, yes. Yes, it would. But anyway, so the electric car pushes the winning entry up to speed and it stops. Wow. Impressive stuff. Definitely the future of transportation, which may go some way to explaining why this is now an unlisted video on SpaceX's website. And that whole thing about wouldn't a simple electric car, you know, like you buy from the toy store, win such a race hands down becomes remarkably prescient for subsequent competitions, where it would basically become a competition to make the smallest, most powerful electric car that you could. And even though it was running in a vacuum chamber, they, of course, had to make these cars sleek and streamlined, like that would actually make a difference in a vacuum. Not that it ever mattered, of course, because none of these overpowered toy cars ever went fast enough that atmospheric drag would have ever been a problem. But hey, thousands of universities decided that this was the project for their design students to design a uh, pod that will never get any benefit from the lack of air resistance, but will have all of the technical challenges of actually working in a vacuum. Yeah, that's an awesomely important engineering problem to solve. Well, it was a toss up between that and developing a paint for the Antarctic base that is resilient to droppings from tropical birds. Hyperloop is a fifth mode of transportation. You have cars, boats, trains, planes. It's a high-speed transportation that fits people within a tube and you can get from A to B in a very short amount of time. Yeah, it would have been better if their engineering students had been told that the Hyperloop is a very old idea. The vacuum train's like 100 years old and no one's ever made one because it's bloody impractical to make massive long vacuum tubes. But don't worry, Elon Musk fans, he's going to prove me wrong by delivering a 10 kilometer long Hyperloop track in 2020. Oh yeah, that's right, that never happened. Kind of like he presented fake solar roofs as real ones in 2017, or how he presented a self-driving electric convoy truck that would beat rail in 2019, or a million self-driving Tesla robo-taxis by 2020. Okay, so he didn't do any of that, but it's not like anyone ever got prosecuted for defrauding investors like that. Oh. One of the most blockbuster pieces of evidence was actually Holmes's words herself. There was a secret phone call with investors that was recorded. Um, the, the convoy technology, the tracking technology, this is something that we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. So this is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. It, it was her making bold claims, sort of uh, uh, outlandish claims that, that, that cannot be supported by the evidence. The houses you see around you are all solar houses. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you, did you notice? Yeah. Where she claimed that they were going to be putting Edison's, their Theranos blood testing device, on Medivacs. Uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year. With no one in them. Next year. We'll do Model 3 S, S3 and X as taxis. That they were on track to make over a, a billion dollars. You say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single robo-taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of $30,000 per year. So let's say a million robo-taxis at $30,000 profit per year is $30 billion profit by 2020. Actual profit? Zero that they were on track to make over a, a billion dollars. The fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane
to buy anything other than a Tesla. Elizabeth Holmes has argued at trial that she had always attempted to create a genuine product that worked and that she never intended to commit fraud. The verdict is in the disgraced Theranos founder and CEO found guilty. And a man who fancies himself a god feels a very human chill crawl up his spine. That's a bingo. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. We were talking about the millions of man hours wasted in engineering schools because no one bothered to fact check the vaporware hype by Elon Musk, leading to students pimping it like this. Hyperexcite is a student project to prove that the Hyperloop concept could be a reality in the future and it's part of a competition being put on by SpaceX. Yeah, about the same time the engineering students were doing this, I was making the busting videos. Guess which one stood the test of time? We've done this entirely from scratch. We went from just a design to an entirely constructed pod in such a short amount of time. And not one of them questioned the fundamental viability of what they were doing. Yay, go wasting time montage. We have our own unique design. We have air levitation, which most teams are actually using magnetic levitation. Yes, or that, because most people had worked out that using air levitation in a vacuum is actually quite challenging. I mean, sure, it's a central concept of Elon Musk's white paper. On page 15 of the white paper. All glory to the white, uh, but we all know how that stood the test of time. The warning signs were there very early on, when just a year or so after the uh, white paper was published, Elon Musk was asked whether he favoured electromagnetic levitation or aerodynamic levitation. And his answer was wheels. Which one do you prefer? Still the air readings or do you go with magnet? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good question. So, you know, the... <clears throat> a couple of minutes later. Um, so, I'd probably advocate um, wheels and... Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Why, that's an odd thing for a genius to say when his only contribution to the uh, Hyperloop was we're going to run it on air skis and compressors. Pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> I feel really excited and proud to be a part of a project that is on the cutting edge of transportation and innovation and we're really trying to make the future of affordable transportation a reality, and that's what we're doing here at HyperXcite. And I was stunned to find out that this Excite project is still running. And you'll never guess what, they've advanced from the high-tech air bearings to wheels. Because I say you are killing the very spirit this institution proclaims it instills. Although that hasn't stopped them from claiming this amazing new invention of the wheel moving on a track will be a remarkable new technology that will get you from Los Angeles to San Francisco at 700 miles per hour in about half an hour. What a sham. What kind of a show are you guys putting on here today? One of the goals is to win this competition, but there's another goal in that we're collecting information to allow companies in the future to build a full-scale Hyperloop at a lower cost because we'll have done some of that preliminary research. It's also just a project for students to learn more about how to be engineers. Actually, the first thing you should ask is, can this ever be done commercially? And the answer with the Hyperloop is a very clear no. Our last minute touches and we'll be heading to SpaceX. The fact that undergrad students could come together dealing with school and their own life and uh, be able to make something this big is incredible. Oh jeez, I'm getting flashbacks from this exact same sort of video when University of California Berkeley had their students working on the water seer, uh, which was going to provide free water for the world. And spoilers, some of the simplest engineering calculations showed that this would never be viable. We want the Hyperloop to become a reality. It would join cities together. It would change the world. There's a future. Like, I can't see actually Hyperloop being in this country and then people will use it and then... One day I'm going to be like, 
oh, I remember. <laughs> that was my senior project. I actually worked on it. Yes, that and the uh, solid gold battery. But sure, you gotta give it a must. There are many people who could get this many universities to spaff this much cash on a really dumb idea. Hell, even the mere mention of his name has now become a magnet for believing in and throwing money at obviously dumb stuff. But still, let's say this company's battery captures a still very conservative 3% of the overall electric car market. That would be enough to boost its revenue by an earth shattering 81,000%. Elon Musk just made a massive bet on a practically unknown technology we call GTE. And right now, anyone with $25 to spare can get in alongside him and ride this breakout technology to extraordinary potential gains. A truck, think about the Roadster where people are calculating the size of those battery packs to hit those specs didn't quite add up unless there was dramatic weight savings. Maybe they're implying this battery breakthrough. Remember, the semi truck and Roadster debut happened in late 2017. Interesting thing about this, which I think this is going to be the shoe to drop that the clue this would be like the, the, the real piece of evidence is that um, they claim the battery initially even increases its capacity as you charge it and discharge it. So it keeps getting better. This prototype solid state battery based on lithium ion glass faces criticism over claims its capacity increases over time. So as you use it, the range of your car would actually increase a little bit according to the weird way that this battery works. At that rate, we can see a share price gain of 36,000% as the quantum glass battery achieves mass market adoption. The fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. Let me know now, and I'll include one more special bonus report. You've probably heard about another major development taking shape across the world right now, which I've been following very closely. I'm talking about, of course, legalized marijuana. 